Reporting live from my parents' living room, it's Miss Briscoe. Okay, in this proof, we are given that line L and line T are perpendicular, and that line M and line T are also perpendicular. Remember this little upside down T symbol is the symbol for perpendicular. So when lines are perpendicular, we can say in our proof, our next step is we can say that they are creating a right angle. So line T and line L create angle one. So we can say angle one is a right angle. Line T and line M create angle two. So we can say that angle two is a right angle. So in step two, angle one and angle two are right angles. The reason that we know that those are both right angles is because we told you in the given that the lines were perpendicular. So the reason, the justification for this step, why are those two angles right angles? They're right angles because that's the definition of perpendicular lines. Because you know that those lines are perpendicular, we are able to say that those are both right angles. If angle one is a right angle, and angle two is a right angle, you should start recognizing that pattern. If they're both right angles, they're congruent to each other. That's the right angles congruence theorem. When two angles are both right angles, they're congruent to each other. Their measures are both 90 degrees, they're congruent to each other. Right angles congruence theorem. Right angles are congruent. Now, I am trying to prove that two lines are parallel. Our goal is that we're trying to prove that line L and line M are parallel. So I know that if I'm trying to prove that two lines are parallel, I'm definitely going to use a converse. So I'm going to use the converse of, of something, one of my theorems or postulates. So I know that angle one and angle two are congruent. What type of special angles are angle one and angle two? See that upside down F? They are corresponding. Angle one and angle two are corresponding angles. Because they're corresponding and they're congruent, that means that line L and line M have to be parallel. If L and M were not parallel, then angle one and angle two could not be congruent. So, because angle one and angle two are congruent, I proved that here, and because angle one and angle two are corresponding, I can use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So something to keep in mind. A common mistake that people make on proofs is that they say, oh my gosh, one and two are corresponding, therefore they're congruent, angle one and angle two are congruent, and in step three they would say like, oh, that's the corresponding angles postulate. Remember, we can only use the corresponding angles postulate if we know the lines are parallel. I, I didn't know that the lines were parallel. Like it doesn't tell me in step one that the line, that line L and line M are parallel. I don't know in step two that line L and line M are parallel. So I cannot use the corresponding angles postulate, the alternate interior angles theorem, the alternate exterior angles theorem, or the uh, same side interior angles theorem because I don't know the lines are parallel. That's the whole point of this proof is I'm trying to prove that the lines are parallel. So if you're trying to prove that two lines are parallel to each other, you are going to use a converse. And until you prove the lines are parallel, you can't use the regular theorems and postulates.